Hey friends, it's Kelly Thorne Gore. I am a life and a business coach and so passionate about helping you create a life you love. We are on day 38 of a 40 day prayer challenge. We've been using the book, Draw the Circle by Mark Batterson. And oh my gosh, it's incredible. It's been amazing to watch what God is doing. And I'm so excited for what he's doing in your life as well. So before we dive into today's devotional, I just had to share this little tip with you. So one of the things that we create here is the iBloom Life and Business Planner. So this is the last year, 2020, is the last year of the spiral bound version, but we do have a printable version of 2021 that will be coming out in the next month or so. But I thought it was so interesting. So one of the things in the planner is every week it has a scripture up in the top left corner. So those of you who use the planner, did you happen to notice what the scripture is this week? I love how God works. So in the top corner, so up here, this is my little demo one because it's not filled out. Mine is a hot mess. But it says, it's our overarching verse for this 40 day prayer challenge. And it's so fitting that it's on this week and it's the last week of our prayer challenge. So it says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be open. I think this is so interesting that this overarching verse that we've been kind of wrapping our brains around of what does it mean to persistently pray and to seek God is this week's iBloom Planner of the Week. So I love that. If you don't have a planner, they're actually on clearance right now, $10, that's it, plus shipping. So you can go grab that at kellythorngore.com. But yeah, Missy, I loved that confirmation. <clears throat> when I planned the 40-day challenge, you guys know, I just kind of like put it together at the last minute, literally. And I just felt like God wanted me to invite you guys to be a part of it and to do it with me. So I restarted. But when I, I mapped it out, I didn't realize that was the verse. So I love that we're ending with that one. All right, so today's day 38. We only have three days left, counting today. So after this, it's only two days. Oh my goodness, but I have some fun things in store, so just get ready. Okay, so today's is Climb the Watchtower. And I love the imagery of this, and I want you to think of the Watchtower as in answered prayers in your life. And if we were to climb on top of the answered prayers in our life, and we were to pray with the faith and the assurance and the trust that God was going to show up in a really big way. And so the one thing I want you to think about today in particular is I want you to reflect on the answered prayers in your life. I want you to spend some time in your journal making a list of the answered prayers, the things that you have seen God do in your life, all the ones that you can remember. So some of you might need to go through journals. Some of you might just need to be reminded to sit and think. Some of you might need to ask God to remind you of what are answered prayers in your life. And when we see God work in our life, something powerful happens because we can pray from that place of assurance. We can pray knowing he's answered our prayer before and he can do it again. And so it helps to build up our faith when we see where God has been at work in our life. And I don't know about you guys, but I have so many answers to prayers, some that are like really, really big things. And then some that wouldn't be so big, they're small, and yet they remind me that God was working out the details, that God knew the desires of my heart, and he worked those out. Okay, so digging into today's devotional, he says, intercessors are like watchmen and watchwomen. 
They see sooner and farther in the spiritual realm. So when we are praying and intercessing, especially on other people's behalf, we can see things that oftentimes they can't yet see. We can see things that are happening and things that are to come in the future. And he says, because prayer gives us a unique vantage point. I love this reminder. He says he loves praying on the rooftop of Ebenezer's coffee house because it's on top of an answered prayer. And so I told you, I want you to reflect on the answered prayers. And you might not have a physical location of an answered prayer. Maybe you do. But I want you to literally, like figuratively, I guess, pray on top of the answered prayers in your life to use that to build your faith. He says, it's hard not to pray with faith when we pray in a place or in a posture where God has already done a miracle. And I think so many times the enemy wants to cause us to doubt or to wonder, like, could this be me? Could this happen? Why would God answer this prayer? And instead, when we operate from a place of faith and belief, and there is no doubting, we come with a completely different posture. And so knowing that God has been faithful in the past allows us to have that posture. He said, um, he was talking about Elijah's, the miracle that Elijah experienced. And he said, that miracle gave Elijah the faith he needed to pray hard. And you have a miracle in your life where God is using it to give you the faith to pray hard now in whatever it is that you're asking God to do. And that is one of the byproducts of answered prayer. It gives us faith to believe God for bigger and better miracles. With each answered prayer, we draw bigger prayer circles. We can expect God for more because we've seen him do more in the past. With each act of faithfulness, it increases our faith. With each promise kept, it increases our persistence quotient. Anybody need their persistence quotient increased right now? Yeah, I think a lot of us do. We need our faith increase. We need our determination. We need the ability to pray hard and to pray long. That God is going to show up in his perfect timing and he's preparing you now to receive that. He talked about the importance of going back to spiritual places of significance. So maybe a physical location where um, you felt God for the first time or a physical place where God um, invited you into something deeper or where God answered a prayer. You know, those places, some of them are physical locations, but then he also talked about the place we choose to pray is significant. And he talked about how the Israelites pitched a tent of meeting outside the camp. So they would be apart. He talked about how Jesus prayed on mountains by water and in gardens So he was set apart. He was in the quiet. And he said, we need to find a place where we are free from distraction, where we get good reception, where we can focus and where our faith is strong. So I have a place in my house that is like this, but I have another place. There's a small lake near my house and It's a place that I often go when I need a breakthrough. So when I feel overwhelmed, I go there. When I need God to break through somewhere, or I'm just like longing for like this more intimate place with God. And so I leave this blanket in my car at all times. And anytime I can go to this place, I know that I'm going to hear God speak to me in a very real relevant way. And so I love to go there by myself. And I throw out my blanket and I find like the most secluded place that is still safe. And it's where I connect and pray with God. There's something about the water. I know there have been numerous times where God has used the birds to speak to me. A lot of times when I was single and just starting my business and I was 
had no money, like none. And I needed to be reminded often that God provides for the birds. And so, of course, he's going to provide for me. And so over the years, God has used nature, whether that's the water or the birds or, you know, something that has spoken to me and reassured me. And so I want to encourage you to find those places, to find the places where you can really connect with God. And I believe it's kind of a set apart place. I know that God speaks to me differently at the lake than he does just when I'm praying in my home. Another place for me um, is my back deck. And so one of the rhythms I've gotten gotten into with this 40-day prayer challenge is that during lunchtime, that's my time to sit out on the deck by myself. So I put a show on for the kids. I let them watch a show while they eat lunch. And they love that little break. And I love the break to sit out on the deck and to pray and to connect with God. And so I just want to encourage you to find those physical places, but also find the places in your schedule, because this is really important that we have time to pray and to seek God. So you've got two challenges today. Challenge number one is I want you to go back and reflect on all the answered prayers in your life and how God has faithfully shown up. I want you to create a list so that you can have it handy. And this is going to be like your mountaintop, like your physical location, that you're going to stand upon those miracles. And you're going to use that to build your faith and to increase your trust and allow you to know that if God did it before, he can do it again. And then two, I want to make sure that you have some physical location places where you can connect with God in such an intimate way. That's the place where you pray and you seek him and maybe you've got your journal and you're just sitting with him and you're allowing him to speak into your heart. All right, I hope you have an amazing day. I will see you tomorrow for day 39.